I'm sure we all know of the song by the Beatles, All You Need Is Love. As many of you know of it, kind of an anthem for the movement often called Flower Power in the late 1960s. Now, I remember hearing some evangelical folks on American TV a while back saying that the whole 1960s Flower Power message of love and peace, which was epitomized by the Beatles song, was mediocre and not at all in touch with reality. Now, in terms of this particular song, John Lennon said he and his message were revolutionary. But it's clear to anyone that hears this gospel that this is definitely not the case. Because when reading today's gospel, it's obvious that Jesus, the divine Son of God, basically said the same thing as the Beatles several centuries before. And while the evangelical preachers may have wanted to dismiss this message, we know that we can't. Jesus says in today's gospel that when it comes to the commandments, love is all we need. Love of God and love of neighbor. But, as it is with all things Jesus says, there are many layers to unpack in this message. And love is a lot more complicated than it seems. In the words of another pop song, love is a battlefield, and it requires a lot more than hugs, kisses, and peace signs. Jesus wasn't a 1960s hippie. For him, love goes much, much deeper. But before we get into that, let's talk about the context of this gospel passage. First of all, to really understand this gospel, it's important to keep in mind that the Pharisees had an obsession with the law. In fact, the current situation we're all in can actually help us grasp some of the context this gospel. As you well know, right now our own lives seem to have been taken over by rules and laws. For the past several months, everything we do here in the UK and in most parts of the world has been restricted by some kind of rules and laws. And even though we're all aware of the reasons for why we currently have these laws and why we follow them, we also know that sometimes can be a bit tedious and a bit difficult. But for your average Jewish person in the first century, all of our laws and regulations that we have right now are like kids stuff compared to the laws and rules they had been given by the Pharisees. In the Old Testament, there are, of course, the commandments, then there are the dietary and the hygienic rules and laws. But by the time Jesus was born, the Pharisees other religious group leaders had tacked on so many extra laws, it eventually got to over 600 rules and regulations that every Jew had to follow. And Jesus could see that things had become a bit silly. People were more concerned about following the law for the law's own sake than for any other reason. In fact, Jesus was frequently getting on the Pharisees' last nerves because he was often seen doing things that were going against the law, like picking corn to feed his disciples on the Sabbath. It didn't matter if they were hungry, it was against the law. So in last week's Gospel, and in this week's Gospel, we see the Pharisees trying to trap Jesus by asking him questions about Jewish life and the law, hoping that they could use something he says against him. And when he asked about the greatest commandment in the law, Jesus said the whole law hangs on one thing, love. All of the rules and regulations the Pharisees had come up with and told everyone else to follow were missing any semblance of love. However, as I mentioned before, love isn't as straightforward as it might seem. It's not just a sentimental emotion. It's a lot deeper than that. The perfect example of love is the love that Jesus shows us in his life, passion, and resurrection. One of the most well-known gospel verses is from the Gospel of John, and it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son." Jesus, who is God in human flesh, willingly died on the cross so that we might understand 
kind of love that God loves us with. Jesus' actions are saying to us that God loves us so much, He is willing to die on a cross to prove it. He'll go to no end to show us that perfect love is giving yourself for the other. That is why Jesus always ties love in with service, serving one another, giving oneself for the other. That is love. The good of the other and the idea of serving one another was an almost alien concept to the Pharisees. That's why Jesus tells them love is at the heart of the entire law. Love of God and love of neighbor. It's not about appearances. It's not about following rules for the sake of following rules. It's about making sure that every action that we do is guided by a giving, unselfish love. Jesus instructed his apostles to bring the good news to each and every person in the world so that they might experience this love of God. And Jesus established his church to do this. He did this out of love. He continually makes himself present in the church through the Blessed Sacrament, out of love. And when we make mistakes or we fall short of the calling that he has given us, he extends his mercy to each of us, out of love. In the first century of Christianity, one of the things that convinced so many Romans to convert was the way Christians treated one another. St. Paul commended the Christians of Thessalonica in the second reading today for their relationship with God. And this relationship with God was often practical. They helped each other in the community. And that is what we are called to do ourselves. So the Beatles were right when they said all you need is love. But we must be aware of the depth of the kind of love we need. We must love with all our heart, all our soul, and our mind. It's giving everything that we are. I think that's the reason why so many say they didn't really understand true love until they were married and had a family. Because marriage and family life involves giving yourself completely for another. Parents will often do anything for their children without hesitation, sometimes theological, but it's because of love, true, giving, and unselfish love. So let us pray today for the grace to fulfill the calling we have been given to love